Welcome to this first module in the series of 14 modules on the fundamentals of telecommunications. Today I'll be providing you with a brief overview or introduction to telecommunications. I'm Ted Chandler, your instructor for this online course. After completing this module, you will be able to first discuss a short history of telecommunications. Then you will be able to define communications and telecommunications illustrate components of a communications system, understand the differences between voice, video, and data communications, identify careers available to telecommunications professionals, and finally, you will be able to identify the organizations responsible for establishing significant telecommunications standards and policies. Before we get into the technical aspects and technologies of telecommunications, I'd like to briefly list my short history of telecommunications. In other words, the most important milestones in history that I feel have led to the advanced and exciting field of telecommunications as we know it today. So bear with me as I simply list these events, and then I'll talk more about many of them later in Module 3 and subsequent modules. The telegraph was invented by Samuel Morse way back in 1844, and his invention can be called the first use of electricity for communications over a distance. Some 32 years later, in 1876, the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell, and it was initially scoffed at because many people thought all communications could be done by the telegraph. A year later, Bell formed Bell Telephone Company, and in 1899, Bell and other investors formed the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, or AT&T. This was the first long-distance telephone company. At the turn of the century, there were roughly 6,000 local independent telephone companies with approximately 600,000 customers or subscribers, but AT&T controlled all long-distance for a total monopoly of long-distance calls. Also at the turn of the century, Marconi transmitted Morse-coded communications over the airwaves from the U.S. to Europe beginning AM FM radio, and also for the beginning of the whole wireless entertainment and communications industry as we know it today. In 1913, the Kingsbury Agreement was reached between the government and AT&T, in which AT&T began to connect its long-distance network to all local independent telephone companies, not just the Bell uh, local telephone companies. In 1934, Congress enacted the Communications Act, establishing the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. Its goal was to, tel uh, to provide telephone service for all citizens at a reasonable price. In 1946, AT&T began mobile phone service, and in 1977, Bell Labs transmitted TV signals over optical fibers. Based on the Telecommunications Act of 1984, the courts broke up Ma Bell into eight different regional Bell operating companies called Reeboks or Baby Bells. In 1996, Congress enacted the Telecommunications Reform Act with the goal of equal access to foster local competition by allowing creation of competitive local exchange companies, or CLECs, and long-distance telephone companies by allowing a formation of, of uh, long-distance companies like Sprint and MCI. Today, I believe the important events uh, that are occurring include the new packet switch data networking, or the PSDN, replacing the 100-year-old public switch telephone network. Also that voice, video, and data is, is converging over single IP networks. And also that wireless communication is on a huge role with their new G3 and G4 cell networks and the numerous uh, versions of the wireless LANs and everything else that is wireless today. I'd like to also mention that Bell's patent for his telephone invention has become the most valuable patent in history 
and it is credited with launching the multi-trillion dollar worldwide telecommunication industry that we know today. Before we leave this slide, note the simplified diagram of Bell's original telephone. When someone spoke into the funnel-like fixture on the telephone, the diaphragm vibrated with sound waves causing a conducting rod to move up and down in a cup of acid. Batteries supplied power to electrify the cup of acid. As the road rose and fell, it changed the circuit's resistance. This caused the line to the receiver, not shown, to fluctuate, which in turn caused the membrane of the receiver to vibrate, producing sound. The Romans used the Latin word communicare, which they meant to make common, to share, or to impart. Thus, communications is the sharing of information or messages between two or more entities. The Greek word tele means over a distance. Thus, putting these two parts together, you can get telecommunications or communications that, pan, that spans a distance. Or in other words, telecommunications is the transfer of information, communications, from a transmitter to a receiver over a distance through a physical medium such as copper, glass fiber, air, water, and even a vacuum. Every communication system includes the following five elements. First, the source, or the originator of the message, whether it is a person or a machine. The transmitter, which is the equipment that modifies the message, either data or voice, into the form required for transmission. Third, the communications channel, or the means of carrying the signal from the source to the destination, which may be physical, like a copper wire or fiber optic cable, or atmospheric, like radio waves. Fourth is the receiver, and that's the device that captures the message from the communications channel and converts it into a form that the person or machine at the destination can understand. And finally, the destination or the person or machine to whom the message is directed. There are basically three ways information can flow. In only one direction, from source to destination, and this is called simplex communications. Half-duplex communications occurs when messages travel in both directions between the source and the des destination, but in only one direction at a time. And finally, full-duplex communications is information transmitted over the communications channel in both directions simultaneously. In one-to-one -one communications, a signal source sends information to a signal destination, to a single destination, such as a telephone. In one-to-many communications, a single source simultaneously sends information to multiple destinations, or similar to radio broadcast. And in many-to-many -many communications occurs when sources issues messages to many destinations, or multiple sources issues messages to many destinations, such, in, such as in a LAN and mesh free spaced optics. Within the field of telecommunications, professionals typically divide its services into three categories, voice, video, and data. Voice telecommunications refers to any means of using electrical signals to transmit human voice across a distance, such as telephones and radio broadcasts. Video telecommunications refers to the electrically based transmission of moving pictures and sound across a distance. And data telecommunications refers to the use of electrical signals to exchange encoding information between computerized devices across a distance. The public switch telephone network, or PSTN, infrastructure includes global and cross-country optical fiber cabling and regional copper and increasingly more optical fiber cabling to connect long distance and local calls.
The PSTN includes numerous local, regional, and national switching centers where phone calls are routed to their destinations by computerized telephone switches. It also includes local connections called the local loop, which is up to three miles in length, connecting the provider's central office with the residences and businesses. This slide illustrates the new telecommunications infrastructure called the Public or Packet Switched Data Network, or PSDN. Rather than tying up complete circuits to connect communications like the old PSTN, communications are divided into discrete packets and transmitted over multiple circuits simultaneously, then reassembled at the receiving end. The new PSDN uses much newer data telecommunications technologies and is much faster than the older PSTN. Additionally, it also ensures better accuracy due to more reliable transmission media and techniques that enable the receiver to monitor the integrity of the data it has received. Besides, Transmission, transmissions over PSDN is much, much cheaper than the PSTN, which will have many of the elements phased out over time. 